Now, rumors came out that David Benavidez said, you know what? I was willing to take a flat fee of $5 million, no pay-per-view upside. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want the fight. What's your reaction to, to, to David saying that? And is Canelo just doing what, what the big dog do? I think Canelo just doing what the big dog do, man. If I'm Canelo, do I fight Benavidez right now? I wouldn't either. And I'm not saying like on a scare note or things, but I'm just like, damn, I got some easy way to get 30 million twice. I can go fight Mungia, which is not a hardest fight as Benavidez, or I can fight uh, Ever Belenga, which I don't think is a, another a hard, a hard fight like a, a Benavidez fight. So I just think that if he that if the fight does come, it probably be like a next year thing. He probably gonna fight Belenga and fight um, Mungia this year. And I think uh, strategically, I think Canelo's team is doing a great job strategically because I think after Mungia fight and he looks him, I know he's gonna look amazing. And um, the Belanga fight happened, and he go, he's probably going to look amazing. When those fights start happening, then we start talking about Canelo. Like, we used to talk about Canelo putting him on. Oh, yeah, this guy's pound for pound. This guy can't be beat, this guy. And I think we start getting those repetitions and talking about Canelo again like that. Then we, we beef up for the for the fight uh, with uh, David Benavidez, and then he maximized the money. He probably make a, a $100 million. On that fight, whether he probably would have got sixty now or seventy, he probably make a hundred million guaranteed uh, fighting Benavidez if if it plays out the way I think his team think it plays out and he dominates his next two fights like we all think he like 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 at least like I think it is from the style matchups. I think I think they do. I think Canelo's team is doing a good job. I think I think I think I think I would have did the same thing if I'm Canelo. I do the same thing not because I'm scared because. I know one day this this journey for me is going to end and I'm going to maximize everything I can and I'm going to get the most money out of everything I can. And while I'm doing it, while I can pick these fights, I'm going to knock this guy out. I'm going to beat this guy up. And I'm going to look good and stunning fast and then everybody's going to talk about me as number one pound for pound once again. You know what I mean? Because right now, right now, it's like out of sight, out of mind. You know what I mean? The last time we seen a fight um, was who? Charlo. Right, with, 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 with Charlo, and um, I thought he looked good. I thought he looked good. I just thought he had a, a kind of partner which didn't make him look the best. But then you go to Munguia and you go to Belanga, those are kind of partners that's tailor-made for Canelo to look good, and I think they're doing a good job, man. But I, do I think he's running for Benavidez? I don't. I just think it's a lot of strategic chess moves going on with the Canelo team and I like the move that he's making. From a financial standpoint, from a business standpoint, I like the moves he's making. What it do, what it do. It's 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Charles J. Tony Harrison say I like the moves he's making. Oh, I'm telling you, that, that interview further convinced me that, um, yeah, Tony Harrison, just like Cool Boy, I think when he went to Aussie, he made a couple, a little extra bag on the side. Yeah, when I look at the way that Tony Harrison looked that night, and how he wasn't his normal shit talking self like he was with Jamel and this and that, and how humble he was in Australia, yeah. Um, it's not shocking coming from Tony Harrison. Um, I'm just pointing this shit out. I'm just pointing out that. Um, we not gonna we we not gonna put this on Mexican as much shit as I I I don't think nobody talk more shit about Mexicans than me. I just don't. I I think I talk the most shit about them. But in this case, um, this ain't just Canelo fans. This ain't just Mexicans protecting Canelo or none of that. It's more so Mexicans telling Canelo to fight Benavidez than it is black fans. To me, it's to me it's more. Uh, I've heard just as many black fans protect and. And, and take up for Canelo. I've heard just as many. I've heard just as many. Uh, so this um this is not a Canelo fans issue, and this is not a something I can throw on Mexicans and say it's their fault because 
like I said, one thing about boxing, everybody can unite and say that Canelo must fight David Benavidez, including Mexican fans. They'll tell you in a minute, David Benavidez has earned the right for the Canelo fight. But but um, most Mexicans would say, yeah, the fight going to happen and Canelo must fight him. They holding them to it. They holding them to that shit. But they saying he's just trying to maximize his money and this and that. And it's going to be bigger. He just doing us some little shit right now. Listen, um... It's amazing. Um, sometimes I, I don't think black fans understand that they do have a voice. And I think our voice is, without a doubt, the loudest. And I think we got the biggest say so. We just don't realize it. Um, when black fans join in on some shit, that shit get done. That shit damn near get done. I'm telling you. I am telling you. That shit get done. I've seen this over and over. But the problem is black fans never unite for the betterment of a black fighter. They don't do it. They they unite to say Bivol and Better Beef is the great fight. And Usyk and Fury must have. They'll unite for some shit like that. So, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, and I know this for a fact. I see it because I, all you got to do is look at the game banging on YouTube. The, the the real reason why there would never be another black superstar or never a, a black face of boxing ever in the history of boxing, I never see that happening again. There would never be another Floyd, never be a Sugar Ray Leonard or Ali, because in my opinion, them them has been the only three faces of boxing. It's only been three faces of boxing to me. That's Ali, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, Dan Floyd. Them, those are the only three faces of boxing. I mean, Mike Tyson was a superstar, but not the face of boxing. Matter of fact, I think there's only been two faces of boxing. Ali and uh, Floyd. I can't. Sugar Ray Leonard was huge, but it was so many other big stars then. It, it, uh, he was the biggest, but I, I don't say Sugar Ray Leonard. He was a superstar, but not the face of boxing. Sugar Ray Leonard and Mike Tyson were superstars. But faces of boxing, I think it's only been two. And that's Ali and Floyd. Because they changed the game. That that got a lot to do with it. The way Jordan changed the game. The way LeBron changed the game. That's face of boxing type shit. Um, so they'll never... At this point, I damn near don't even think... It'll never be a black fighter that's a bigger superstar than Mike Tyson. I don't think I, I think it's just gonna be levels to it. You're gonna have some sugar shane Mosley type stars or some shit like that or some or some Zab Judas type shit, but it ain't gonna be no black fighter that run boxing and got power to where they can go to any division. Like Canelo doing? I ain't never seen it. Tank don't got that kind of power. Tank is tied in with Al Heyman and Floyd. He can't just go where the fuck he wanna go and make whatever fight. He can't do that shit. His fights gotta be on Amazon Prime. So and like I said, um, that's why I say my problem is black fans. That's who make it the hardest for me to enjoy the sport because we low-key have the loudest voice, but we use it for nothing but destruction. We use our voice to shit on other black fighters and uplift other fighters and make everything fair on the other side, but we ain't fair with each other. I'm telling you, the real reason why it won't be a black face of boxing, it ain't just mainstream media. It ain't just it. Uh, None black fans don't want to see a face of boxing and the white mainstream media don't want to see a face of boxing. Black fans don't want to see no black face of boxing because we don't want no Negro to feel like he better than us. We don't want to see no other Negro get farther than us. Uh, nah, we don't want to. We, we do not want to see that. Tank would much rather in a way be the face of boxing than Devin Haney or Shakur. <laughs> he would much rather. Tank fans would much rather Ryan Garcia or in a way be the face of boxing rather than Shakur or Devin Haney. And that that's just my opinion. I think the jealousy amongst us will destroy ourselves and uplift a, a <laughs> better be just so one of us won't make it out the barrel. That's just how I feel. That's just how I feel. And um yeah, that's how I feel. And that's what I see. Um we the reason. We are the reason we here. We are the reason why boxing ain't shit and it's so much chaos. We keep up all the mess. We keep up all the mess. 
It is not Mexican fans. Matter of fact, I said Mexican fans are the worst fans and UK fans are the worst fans. UK fans are the worst fans. Mexican fans are not the worst fans. No, you're not. I don't like, you know, I don't fuck with you, mother. But what I'm saying is this. <laughs> like, it ain't, no, nah, bro. Y'all gonna do what y'all do. We know when a Mexican and a black fight, y'all gonna stay on code for that shit. That's the only thing y'all get on code for. The only thing y'all get on code is to beat a black fighter. But the point I'm making is, um, now, um, I think black fans are capping more for Canelo than his own fans, in my opinion. Because I've, I've heard it over the last couple of days. Canelo do what he want to do. So what? So give him 200 mil. And his fans out here really thinking Canelo deserves a $200 million. You heard Tony Harrison say uh, he, he can make $100 million versus Dave Benavid. Really? $100 mil. Is Canelo even worth $50 mil for a fight with David Benavid? Is he even worth that? Like I said, numbers don't matter. We don't we don't go by your numbers when you ain't black. We don't go by Canelo's numbers. We don't. The way he get paid is way more than what he bring to the table. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I'm going to say this on the other hand. Because um, boxing is not baby and Canelo. Boxing just stay on cold because they rather see him be the face of boxing than a black fight. They will lie for him to the end. That That is the whole agenda. They're going to lie for him to the end because they be damned if it be another black man. is the face of boxing. They, they, they keeping that shit out the way. They just not finna do it, bro. They not finna allow that shit no more. And we ain't gonna allow it. Like I said, we our own destruction. It ain't just they ain't gonna allow it. We gonna help them destroy our own motherfucking self. I'm th we gonna fight with them to destroy us. And make sure don't no black fighter ever be no major. I'm talking about to where in all the sports, everybody just talk about them. It ain't gonna be that, bro. You gonna have a lot of talent, but you ain't gonna have no superstars. And we gonna help that 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 not happen we gonna make sure that don't happen so um that's how i feel about it when it comes to david benavidez um i say the uh, boxing world been baby and ryan they've been babying david benavidez too because i agree with canelo canelo said uh, not about no motherfucking 200 mil or 150 or 100 mil i don't think he worth 50 mil i don't i don't think canelo is worth no because he get down there 35 40 mil every fight no matter who he fight i don't think he's worth that it's like a lot of motherfuckers just overpaying him bro he's not even worth that canelo a 10 million dollar ass fighter oh 10 million ass fighter which is a lot of money still you don't bring that kind of money to the table to earn a $40 million fight, no matter who I fight, you ain't even selling like that. Anyway, but he said, what do David Benavidez bring to the table? Nothing. Nothing. We said belts don't matter, and I guess now all of a sudden they do matter again. Well, Benavidez don't got no belts, and he ruined both of his chances. And we can keep talking about that shit. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, we ought to forgive him for that cocaine. We ought to forgive him for being overweight. He changed, and now he disciplined. Uh, nah, bro, you lost them belts. And now Canelo got the belts, and you don't have a title. You have nothing to bring to the table. You are a former world champion. You never was a unified world champion. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what's been so spectacular that David Benavidez has done that he's the guy to beat Canelo. Why, why Morel ain't the guy to beat? Because Morel and David Benavidez has the same resume outside of Caleb Plant. Outside of him being Caleb Plant, who Canelo already knocked out, him and Morel got the same exact resume. So why Morel ain't the uh, man to be? Why Mabili ain't the guy to be Canelo? Bro, it's all kind of guys that are the man to be Canelo. It ain't David Benavidez, bro. The reason why people keep saying it is because David Benavidez size. They think he too big for Canelo, and they think he going to overpower him. And like I said, Canelo ain't no uh, Hall of Famer to me. I don't think he's special. I don't think he's a great fighter. I think he's a very good fighter. But David Benavidez is tailor-made for him. He has no defense. He gonna run into something. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. That's not a hard fight to figure out. I've said it over and over, bro. He has no defense. How do you trust that? You think he's just gonna absorb all those punches and he's just a warrior? And he's just gonna keep taking flush, fight, uh, flush punches and... David Benavidez don't have the style for a long, uh, prosperous career. When you have no defense, bro, you're going to take a lot of punishment. He just ain't fought a puncher yet. 
David Benavidez has yet to get in the ring with a 168 pounder that can punch. He fighting this Slovakia dude uh, that's, that was retired for three years. Was retired for three years. After Better Beef retired him. You moving up and fighting him. I'm going to tell you some real shit, bro. You'd have got way more respect if you had at least went up there and fought Anthony York. And I think you can beat Anthony York. But I just want, that's somebody that can punch, though. David Benavidez has yet to fight a puncher. And he got dropped early in his career by a dude that couldn't even punch. I, like I said, David Benavidez's chin has never even really been tested. And you motherfuckers talking about it. He, he the man to beat Canelo, bro. No defense and your chin ain't never been tested. Get the fuck out of here. That's why I just know motherfuckers, black folks love to agree on some shit that ain't got shit to do with us. I swear to God. They want to argue when it comes to some shit with us. When it's some shit we trying to get for black fighters, we trying to get this tank versus dead man. We trying to get tank versus Shakur. Now you motherfuckers want to argue. But like I said, you can get along and cry for Benavidez. And like I said, I have no sympathy for David Benavidez. And the reason why, for one, uh, I'm hearing that David Benavidez checked Canelo. He checked him. He G-checked him and all this shit. David Benavidez didn't check a motherfucking thing. No, no, no. He checked Caleb Plant. He, he, he checked Jamal Charlo. He ain't never checked Canelo. Bro, he tweeted like a little broad. Like he was like, like in a little diary. No, I'm not gonna cry. This is not the time. Cause you're not worth my tears. Ooh. That's what that motherfucking tweet said. And you can try to say grow up paranoid. Bro, that wasn't no stiff shit. And you cuss. You talk gangster and shit. You talk like, and, and uh, your brother got shot. Y'all done been in some street shit. Y'all act street. You got a black swagger and you act street and you got gangster with Jamal. You got gangster with Caleb Plant. You have yet to get gangster with Canelo Rao. Bro, you still humble. You still humble and you low key like a little bitch. It's like, you really pay him, pay him the 200 mil. Pay him. Let me tell you something. Benavidez, you so, I don't have no respect for, I just don't. You got to fight Morel to get my respect. This motherfucker, people think this is a sign of wanting to be great. Tell me, I, I agree. I take uh, five mil and uh, Canelo can get 60 mil. Yeah, I was willing to sign for five mil. Bro, that's dope ain't shit. Know your fucking worth, bro. Don't be so desperate that you're willing to take a million dollar payday to fight Canelo, bro. Stop it. That That's not signs of you wanting to be great, bro. That's signs of you want Canelo spot. Because you feel like once I beat them, it don't matter if I get paid a meal or two meal. I become the face of boxing. You're trying to get clout off Canelo's name instead of being great. I'm going to tell you something, bro. I got a good memory of, <laughs> you know, the weed sometimes. But it come back. It always come back to me. No, no, no. I remember when Jamal and Andre was in their prime. I remember when Mexican fans and black fans agreed with that shit. And it, it was a whole rumor that, because uh, Canelo said it. Yeah, uh, you know, y'all keep saying I'm ducking Jamal and ducking Andre. He was just like, go, go fight other people. Prove yourself somewhere else. Y'all all fight each other. I remember when Canelo fans and black fans, what? Jamal, Andre, stop waiting around for Canelo. Y'all just fight each other. Yeah, Jamal and Andre, just fight each other and stop waiting on Canelo. Yeah, he ducking, so what? What is you chasing him for, though? It don't matter that Canelo's ducking. No, it didn't matter that Canelo was ducking. Me, people were more pissed off saying that Jamal and Andre look desperate as shit. And, well, I'm telling you motherfuckers today in 20 motherfucking 24 that David Benavidez look desperate as shit, bro. Desperate as shit, bro. So we ain't finna change the narrative. That shit is desperate. This motherfucker was gonna take five million dollars just to grace the square. That shit was soft, bro. That shit was soft, bro. You get all you hoes still get no love. All you can get is a fuck you. Get mad if you want to. Kiss my black ass. Listen, man. Uh, David Benavidez, uh, you finna fight Volstich. Uh, I'm hearing that it's gonna be the co-main to a, a tank uh, fight. That's another thing. When you fighting on a co-main, how is you deserving? And how is this such a huge fight with Canelo? That's another thing. It ain't nothing but a bunch of black legends uh, vouching for David Benavidez and vouching for him against Canelo. That is what has made this shit so talked about. 
But what is Benavidez doing without Canelo to try to make him? It's the same shit with Pacquiao, bro. Pacquiao was big, but he wasn't near as big as Floyd. All his fame was off Floyd, bro. Motherfuckers was coming to see him fight because they was trying to match him up with Floyd. Everything became about Floyd. Just like Dave Benavidez went and fought Caleb Plant. Just like uh, Pacquiao went and fought uh, Ricky Haddon and knocked out Ricky Haddon after Floyd already beat him. Uh, and stopped him Then went and fought Oscar You just chasing him bro Your whole name is off Canelo bro You have you should be proud of yourself You've accomplished something Black fans have stood by you uh, Hand in hand like a Dr. King uh, March uh, Let freedom ring We are all joined this, I'm telling you this looks like real integration The way all fans are united And standing by David Benavidez To get the Canelo fight so you should be happy that you have successfully, unlike Jamal, unlike Andre, they never got clout off his name. It, it never made them bigger trying to get the fight with Canelo. It has made you bigger. So you have got all the clout. Steven, they have cried for you. Shaq, them, everybody cried for you, bro. You you have successfully clout chased your name off, day, off Canelo without, win, without any legacy. If you was to retire today, you are not a Hall of Famer, Pimpin. So what the fuck are we talking about? Uh, Canelo must fight him and, and this is the fight And David Benavidez is the fighter to do it He's not even a Hall of Famer If he retired today The fuck out of here bro Some overrated bullshit Some overrated bullshit Like I said bro Canelo versus David Benavidez to me Ain't got shit on Tank versus Devin Canelo ain't even in his prime no more And even when he was in his prime He wasn't that good to me He was decent bro He was a good fighter Never a great fighter Never a great fighter. And he ain't in his prime right now. Devin and Tank in their prime. You motherfuckers can keep ignoring it. Like I said, the same fans that agree with Canelo versus Benavidez, and it's no problem, and Benavidez ain't too big for Canelo, will say that Devin Haney is too big for Tank. So like I said, we fight for others, but we destroy ourselves. I'm telling you, bro, it'll never be a black superstar. And the biggest reasons is black fans is going to tear down every black fighter to come through. And uplift somebody else from way in uh, Korea or somewhere. So, um, I have zero sympathy, bro, for a goddamn David Benavidez. Uh, I'm telling you, bro, you and your fu I wish you the best, though. I and I'm not going to say I don't like you. You just get privileged that black fighters don't get, and I got to call it out. That's all. That's all. But I do appreciate you, David Benavidez. You will pull up on a black channel. <laughs> Shout out. I don't know. I don't know. Well, you ain't done it lately. But when you was building your name up and beefing with Jamal and them, you, you pull up and fuck with us. I'm telling you, bro, black fans love David Benavidez. I'm just telling you. And they and they begin to love old Zoo. I'm going to tell you something. Tim Zoo been over here three months. And that motherfucker get treated already like an American. It ain't been but three months, and he already damn near American. I look at the way Mexicans respect him, them reporters. They just love Tim Zoo. Imagine if Devin Haney had got that look. That's why I said that we are the world shit never works both ways. It's some we are the world shit when Zoo can come over here and get treated like an American. Devin didn't get treated like an Aussie when he went to Australia, though. Know? So, they ain't never asked him to come back. They gonna ask Tim Zoo to come back. After this fight, especially if he win, he's going he's gonna to start having most of his fights in America. So, it is what it is, bro. Uh, you know, we just hate it everywhere we go, but we hate ourselves so much. I just can't get past it. I just, I just can't get past it because it is that bad of an issue that we got we to gotta get together and do something, bro. We're we just going to get worse and worse. And the next generation gonna be worse and it's worse. That's how we get ever since the civil rights movement and we integrated with white folks, it just got worse each decade. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm telling you, we 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 was way better off in the fifties. Way better off. Way better off. Yeah, all that black Wall Street and shit. But anyway, um Um It is what it is. This shit is amazing how that 200 mil, that shit done went viral. Everybody got something to say about that. But like I said, um, the biggest contradiction to me is that, um, see, because I saw how big of a star Conor Ben was becoming. I saw how big of a star, he was becoming a big star in the UK. When he popped dirty, all that shit diminished. All that shit diminished. Canelo is the only fighter 
that not only lost every round to Floyd in a fight that he was supposed to step up and become a superstar, he was exposed and showed that all he is is an aggressive fighter that can't cut off the ring properly and can't deal with an athletic, slick boxer with a high ring IQ. Showed that over and over. Um, we still didn't throw him to the wayside. We still let him pick his opponents. Canelo has strategically, he fought an old Shane Mosley and fought an old Cotto and couldn't stop him. What the fuck are we talking about, bro? Not only that, bro, the one thing Canelo did that he never got really crucified for, he popped dirty for Clembuterol and had the audacity to say it was the meat in Mexico that I ate. And not only that, didn't they raise the levels of Clembuterol like you can use a little more now? <laughs> Some shit. Bro, this is the fakest shit. Canelo is and his career is one of the reasons why boxing is a disgrace. And boxing at this point, we, we, I'm just going to tell you because we we... We overlook the talent in boxing. With the talent in boxing, boxing could become the number one sport in boxing. If the if the best fight the best, really, boxing could easily become the number one sport in boxing. If we had back-to-back -back great top-of-the-line fights after fights, boxing could easily become the number one sport, but it don't deserve to be. It don't deserve to be. Boxing, just like they try to do in the NBA, any, all the sports black people are involved in, they, they go way to Slavosky and try to find somebody that's just as good or better than us. That's, what, that's just what they try to do. That's what they try to do. So, um, it is what it is, man. Um, yeah. Yeah, we the reason why there will never be another black superstar. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's what I think. That's what I think. Like I said, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, man. And then there's some people who don't like Canelo and they just don't like him and think he a fraud and won't, won't David Benavidez to be the one to expose him. And to black fans who feel that way, you should have wanted Jamal to expose him when he was in his prime. You should have wanted Andre to do it. Don't get the fight now. You motherfuckers didn't fight for them. So I don't give a fuck about this shit. You motherfucker, don't start fighting now. Don't learn how to fight now. Don't be boisterous. Don't be outspoken now. So I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't speak up for non-black fighters. I speak up for black fighters. Every now and then I speak up for a non-black. I may say some good shit about them. Because every now and then I give credit with credit due. But nah, bro. Nah. I am for the betterment of black fighters first. All that other shit come next, bro. All that other shit come way after. Way on down the line or some shit. But, um... I'm telling you, bro, Tank, if he had to choose, bro, and if he couldn't be the face of boxing, he would much rather be in a way than a David Haney or Shakur. That's how black people feel, bro. They don't ever want a black man to be at the top unless it's them. I want it to be me. If I can't be the one black, because it can only be one black at the top, bro. We've been trained that way. We robots to that shit. We all know it can be, just like it can only be one main best rapper at a time. It can only be one super hot rapper. It's the same way. It can only be one at a time. So we'll excite ourselves and excite uh, others just so, you know, it don't be a black face of boxing. Because you just don't want nobody ahead of you. But it is what it is. Um, that's what we do. That's what we do. The same motherfuckers who um, are um, crying for David Benavidez, the same people who are saying that uh, Bud needs to fight Ennis, you motherfuckers ain't really crying for Ennis. Like, you crying for Benavidez. You ain't crying for Ennis. You just hoping Ennis is the one that can expose Bud. That's all that is. And you mad he beat up Earl. That's all that is. That's all that is. It ain't that you want Boots to be on top. PBC don't give a fuck about Boots. I'm just telling you dumb motherfuckers. All you stupid motherfuckers that's trying to say Bud Duck and Boots. His own fucking promotion won't even fight for him. Why the fuck they ain't sent Bud a contract for Boots? Stupid motherfuckers. Bro, I swear to God, we just, we just stupid, bro. You motherfuckers ain't fighting for Boots, bro. You just don't like Bud. This dumb fucking monkeys. I, I, black people ruining for me. Yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I might have to take a few days off or some shit and get back with you motherfuckers when that zoo fun door shit happened or some shit. Yeah, I do like the little Rolly and um, uh, Cruz fight. I like that fight more than the main event. I, I just do, and just a part of me. I, I 
a part of me, I just, I just, because, yeah, I think Cruz gonna knock his ass out. And uh, I think Cruz is a problem at 140. I, I, I really think that. I think, I think it's underrated. Um, that was a good win that Tank had. That's one of his best wins is against Cruz. Cruz can be outboxed, but that shit ain't easy as you think. It is not as easy as you think. That's why I said T Tank, when he want to, he got top five defense. Top five defense. That's why I say, as a China bro, I, I have no pro. I will always let black fighters know you motherfuckers act like bitches. I will always call out Shakira for that fake ass shit. And I call out Tank. I call out all black fighters who do weird shit. But at the end of the day, I have no problem uh, saying that uh, I think Tank a special fighter. I think the motherfucker dope. I just think you act like a bitch. And I think his fans are so just weird, bro. Y'all weird out here, bro. Y'all weird. Y'all, the same people. How, how can you, you can't make this make sense to me? You fight for Benavidez and says he deserves Canelo. He's only a one belt champion. He's had one title. Uh, and, and, well, 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 he's had the same title twice and lost it. But Devin's been undisputed and he's a two division world champion. But he's too big for Tank, and he don't deserve it, and he ain't big enough draw, and this and that, even though he on his third straight pay-per-view. I just don't get it, but you same motherfuckers fight for Benavidez. But you will make, the same people will make any excuse why Devin versus Tank shouldn't happen. And I, like I said, bro, come in these comments. Let me know I'm tripping. Let me know I'm tripping. Tell me that Devin versus Tank ain't the biggest fight in boxing. Tell me that Tank versus Devin ain't the most intriguing fight in boxing, bro. You can't, you can't say that with a straight face. Devin Haney versus Tank Davis is the fight. That is the number one fight in boxing, bro. That is a fight. That's the fight. And like I said, I love Tank versus Shakira, too. I think that shit bigger than Canelo versus uh, Benavidez. You talk real shit, and it's a better fight. But, um, yeah, Tank versus Devin, that's the fight, bro. Motherfuckers cap like that shit. They try to ignore that shit and breeze past that shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Since you motherfuckers want to wait five more years for Devin and Tank fight, that's waiting five more years for Benavidez versus Canelo. Canelo ain't got a rush to fight that motherfucker. He ain't did no hell of fire shit. The fuck is he done? Like I'm finna fight for bro, I don't give a fuck about that shit. And like I said, any other, any black fighter had a snout of some powder, we wouldn't even be talking about he need he deserve a shot against Canelo. Even if it was ten years ago, way back in high school, and and a motherfucker found out about it, we'd hold that against him. So it is what it is, man. Um, Tank versus Devin, that's the fight. And I want to make something else very clear. I want to say this though. I want to say this though because I damn not don't believe in that fight. I don't think it's. I just don't. Uh, there's no pressure on Tank to make the Devin fight. There is zero pressure. The only fans that are calling for uh, outside of, you know, little Turk Alice Sheik did his little six thing. What, what, whatever word they call him, your honor, your 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 mister, or your, your peace, or some shit they call him. But anyway, he he banked up. And he was going to offer Tank a big bag. But anyway, uh, it's only Devin Haney fans that are calling for uh, Tank versus Devin. It ain't the entire boxing world. That's why I say everybody can't unite for that, even though they know that's the fight. Even though they know that's the, that's the fight. Look how viral the little sparring shit went. Everybody know that's the fight. Everybody know that Devin and Tank been going back and forth on Twitter. Every They've been dissing each other nonstop for five years. They both watch everything uh, the other one do. Devin watch everything Tank do. We keep trying to act like one of them hating on the other. No, they both don't like each other. Tank watch everything Devin do. Everything Devin do, Tank come out and tweet about it. And he deleted 15 minutes later. I'm just saying, bro. This is a beef. This is some shit that has been going on. And it's to a head. And that's the fight. But let me say this. When it comes to Devin Haney, uh, it's only two fights outside of 140. Uh, with Mat Outside of Matias. Because uh, I I'm going to explain it. But outside of Matias. The only fights that would trump that is Devin. And if Devin was to fight Tank or Devin was to fight Shakur, I'd be like, hell nah. Fight them first. Because those are bigger fights and they're better fights and they're tougher fights to me. I think Tank uh, versus Devin and Shakur versus Devin is a tougher fight for Devin than Matias. But the best fight at 140 that can be made is uh, Devin Haney versus Matias. And low key, I'm telling you right now, in my opinion, Sabriel Matias is more dangerous 
for Devin Haney than David Benavidez is for Canelo. David Benavidez ain't dangerous as people think. Uh, and I'm going to be honest, he ain't relentless like Matias. I think Matias is a... When you talk just better, I think Matias is better and more dangerous. Faster feet. Short shots. I seen some shit in Matias. I was watching... I watched two of his fights earlier today. Sometimes I do that. I get in my, my uh, mode and I get to watching fighters. Matias got some shit. I, I've been missing it. Um, I've been trying to figure out how is he... Wearing these motherfuckers down and he hurt them out the blue. He don't just he wear you down, but he also in the midst of that he hit you with some shit. He got a sneaky at his left hook, he go left hook crazy sometimes. His left hook is his hardest punch. But he throw a right cross that's real short and it's sneaky. Matias is a sneaky fighter. He ain't just that shit ain't dumb aggression. To me, David Benavidez's aggression is more reckless. Matias is actually he looking why he in there. He got a good vision on the inside. And he measuring these shots. A lot of times when he come forward, he ain't always throwing punches. Sometimes he, he'll he let you blow your load. Matias will let you punch yourself out. That's why he rocked that hard guard. And his hard guard is tight. Um, Matias, that right cross he throw on the inside. It, 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 he His punches on the inside, They they he, he aim them right at your chin. He'll throw the left hook and finish with a right cross. Bow! Right on the chin. Then go to the body. He'll work you down, work you up top. It's them sneaky little shots on the inside. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the most dangerous shit about Matias, it ain't just that he come fast like Michael Myers. It's them shots that don't look like they hurt. That shit hurt. His short shots really fucking hurt. That shit hurt, and he and he and the way he, the way he angled that fucking right cross, it's like he just that motherfucker knock your shit sideways. Them short shots don't look like they hurt, but they be vicious. They be vicious shots. That motherfucker is vicious, and Matias really play with his food at times. He will throw that little pit pat shit and let you think, let you get comfortable to taking and and and, and absorbing his punches, and he'll come with that hard ass hook. He'll throw that little bitch at like a 3 out of 10. And out of nowhere, it's a 10 out of 10 full speed. Bow! Let you get comfortable and sleep you. So, um, like I said, he's dangerous. But I, I got Devin winning. But I low-key, I think I think Hitchens is a tougher fight for Devin. But when you talk fans and all that there, and just Devin Haney versus Matias is a more intriguing fight than Canelo versus Benavidez. More intriguing. That shit more intriguing. That shit is more intriguing. And I want to say this too. Because like I said, I could be saying, because Devin and one undisputed. He came in his first fight at 140. He fought the motherfucker that a lot of people didn't want to fight in Regas. And shockingly, motherfuckers went expecting it, wobbled him several times and dropped him. Motherfuckers went expecting it. And they act like, oh, he was too heavy. Really, Devin and kind of did enough to kind of chill. Now, if we say Canelo can chill and he can do what he want and he can holler back in five years when they want. Imagine if I did, like, even as a Devin Haney fan, I ain't never said no. Matias, you got to work your way up and do some more shit and buy three more years, build your name some more, and Devin can do what he want right now. I ain't never said no shit like that as a fan. I said I want to uh, fight after Ryan. I said when Matias fight in the summer, I want to fight in December this year. Unification. I want Devin really to stay at 140 for a while. I don't want him to get, ain't shit at what's away. I want you to stay at 140 and reign. Like Bernard Hopkins. I want you to reign at 140 and anybody come through that bitch knock their ass off. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like you to stay at 140 at least two, three more years. Two, three more years at 140. And um, I could see Devin going from 140 and skipping 147 and going to 154. In two more years. I can see him skipping 147. Maybe getting one fight in. But then going to 154. Because 154 steady heating up. But um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matias versus Devin. Is the best fight at 140 though. That's the best fight. Uh, and like I said. The only fights I'd rather have. Than Devin versus Matias. Is him versus Tank or Shakur. But um. It is what it is man. <laughs> you know. It's crazy. I'm telling you, bro, this is some we are the world and we are the children. I'm just saying, um, that's what boxing do. 
just it just pimp on you stupid motherfuckers bro and you just it's crazy but um I'm telling you, it's just a bunch of, that's everybody. It motherfuckers just cherry pick. Everybody cherry pick. Fans cherry pick. You just pick what to get mad about. When another fighter do the same shit, you don't say nothing. So, you motherfuckers just pick what to be mad about. Bro. Ain't no need to be mad at Canelo now, bro. This motherfucker popped dirty for steroids years ago. Remember, that was when he stopped gassing out. Remember that? Canelo has always had stamina. And that was his biggest weakness, really. Besides quick sand his feet. Uh, Canelo's biggest weakness was that he used to always gas out. Now, all of a sudden, Canelo don't never gas out. And then he looked a little tired against John Ryder. Okay, okay. But outside of that, Canelo has not gassed out. So, uh, whatever's in that Mexican meat, I guess it keep him strong. Um, Canelo, it's amazing. But, um, yeah, we, we allow what we want. We pick and choose. You motherfuckers are a bunch of choosy lovers, so, uh, I'm telling you, some of you motherfuckers tank can't do no wrong. Some of you motherfuckers, and some of you motherfuckers Devin can't do no wrong. Uh, it, it just, it, it, when it get that weird, when your fighter can't do no wrong, you just get weird, bro. Don't don't let yourself get lost in the sauce of black fans. Uh, you can love your favorite fighter, bro, but don't don't never let that shit uh, get past, bro, being a boxing fan. Being a real fan of boxing, bro. And um, I, don't, I don't never, I don't believe in hiding no fighter from no smoke. If anything, bro, when a fighter look look hesitant towards smoke, bro, it make me really not fuck with you. So, you know, and Earl, I'm telling you, bro, you don't wait. When you fight again, it'll be a whole nother year layoff. I just, the energy is weird. That, that, that left a real bitter. Because I, th I, th I thought, I thought Earl by that fight was in July last year. I thought by December, Earl would be right back in the ring with him. I thought he was going straight back to the smoke. That's what I thought. So, you know, motherfuckers don't like it, but you damn sure can't blame Bud for that. You can't blame Bud for that, bro. Waiting six months to get a goddamn eye surgery. That shit, it just looked weird. It, it looked weird. This timing is just very weird. And like I said, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you're confident to go into the rematch. I think it's been too much stalling. But um, low key, I wouldn't mind the rematch happening though. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind it at all. I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind the rematch. I wouldn't mind it. And like I said, uh, I I I prefer um, if Terence Crawford. Uh, I prefer him to fight Boost over Zoo because I think uh, Boost is a better fighter than Zoo. And like I said, in my opinion, um, and why is him? I, I don't even know. You don't even interview him no more. Boost's name was much hotter when he was getting interviews every day with uh, YSM. I just don't know. Now you just show him hitting the bag every now and then. I, we don't even know how he feel. We just don't, we don't know how he feel about old Cody Crowley. We just, I, I don't know, bro. The way they doing, they is not promoting Boost at all. I just because I think I think Boots should be the uh, co-main to the uh, just keep it black just do some shit for once uh, PBC that's actually just you know and I'm telling you if that shit gonna be in Texas watch Benavidez gonna get more love than Tank that shit gonna damn near be all about Benavidez I'm telling you I know how these motherfuckers is in Texas I'm telling you and another thing if you since y'all want to follow this, uh, you should have had Tank in there with a Mexican if you were gonna come to Texas. Oh, they would have made it huge as fuck. You could have filled up the Cowboy Stadium with any Mexican, uh, Tank. You could have got any Mexican off the block and uh, put eighty thousand in the Cowboy Stadium. <laughs> Mexican is coming. They coming. They are coming. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be in Dallas or Houston, but. Uh, I don't know, but Tank gonna sell by himself. Uh, he gonna sell. He definitely gonna sell. But um, I don't know. Texas is very uh different though. It's it's very different out here. Um, but I am excited about the Frank Morton fight. Um, like I said, you should have put boots on the co man. Um, I don't know.
And if you're going to give them Cody Crowley, just let them fight in Philly or something, bro. But also, like I said, I, I don't hear nothing from Boots, bro. And as a fighter, you need to also push your brand. Push your brand. I see you with the um, with the uh, JBE attire and all that shit. And you come out with your little warm-up sweats and shit, bro. But you need to promote your brand more. I'm telling you, you should have been on Zoo Net. Because Zoo responds to everybody. I would have loved you. And he been in Vegas for months. And they show him love. I just would have loved for you to pull up on him. I, I would have loved for Boots to put pressure on Zoo. But like I said, it ain't no smoke. You only got smoke for Bud and Spence at this point. And that's just what I think. So, you know, uh, I can fight for you motherfuckers, but you got to fight for yourself too. Uh, so, that that is Boots' best move to go out the uh, Zoo Fondor winner. That is his best move. That is the best move you can make. Uh, or if you can't do that, like I say, get a, get a good fight with Lubin or something like that. And put you on at 154. But, um, yeah, bro, these fighters do what they want. And uh, we just call out certain fighters when they do it. And, um, yeah, it's just as many black fans as it is Mexican fans saying Canelo deserves $200 million. And he's worth that. And he's, I guess Canelo is just the biggest star ever. I guess you motherfuckers been fooled into believing that. Like I say, bro, but... <laughs> Watch how they watch Devin's numbers against Ryan. They watch. They know when to watch numbers, though. Motherfuckers don't be watching Canelo numbers like that and criticizing him. They don't critique shit. It don't matter, bro. It don't matter. I've heard black fans say, bro, the better be Bivol numbers don't matter because it's just a great fight. Them the same motherfuckers that try to say, well, Devin sold 50K, he don't deserve a tank fight. So... I don't know. We just select the fighters, bro. We just select it. We'll let a motherfucker slap us in our motherfucking mouth. And the next night, because you, you ain't had that pistol, so he slapped you in your fucking mouth. And the next night, you at the club with your homies, and you 10 deep, and you got that little bullshit ass pistol on, and you tough as shit. You tough as shit. I'm telling you, bro, without your homies and without that pistol, I, I just know repeatedly, bro, repeatedly, motherfucker slap you in your motherfucking mouth. This is 903 Boston. I'm your host, Charles Jack. That I'm out.